911 emergency. Do you need police, fire, or paramedics? There was three gunshots at the uh, Walgreens. Pop, pop, pop. And I turned around, and that car kept going. I heard what sounded like gunshots, and I can hear some woman screaming. Oh, my God, my hand. My hand, my they pull over, they have sex, it's actually for the second time that day. I could see that there was a pickup parked on the parking lot of the Walgreens and that there appeared to be a body laying next to the pickup. Totally unknown to law enforcement as to who was the shooter, who was the victim, who was the suspect. Mother of five, Ashley Corrigan thought she was living in a fairy tale, raising her family in a beautiful home with the love of her life, Emmett, a handsome up and coming attorney, unaware her husband was actually living a secret life, spending less time with their dream family and more time at the office where he was sleeping with an older woman and co worker, Candy Hall. All of a sudden, Half of my team was like nowhere to be found most of the time. The kids started asking, like, does dad still live here? She all of a sudden just burst and was like, things aren't going well. Um, he's not coming home. He's going to the gym. He's coming home late. When Ashley had confided in me, I had talked to my husband about it and, and said, you know, something's wrong with Emmett. He's not coming home. He was concerned about someone that was working at his office. I asked, um, well, what do you mean? What do you mean about this new legal assistant? And he just said, she's got trouble written all over. Anytime that thought would cross my mind, I'm like, there is no way. I am 28 years old. She is 40. Like, there is no possible way that could be real. No way. Candy's husband, Rob, is also becoming suspicious of his wife spending more time at the office. He did suspect that perhaps it was an office romance. In fact, he never liked Emmett from the beginning. A lot of friends and family were describing that things were a bit in turmoil. Some of them said Candy had said that Rob was being abusive toward her in different ways. Others said that Rob had had an affair. Rob started to figure out that there was something going on. After only a few months of Candy and Emmett's affair, we know this because there were some emails, and including one in January, um, where he said that he knew that something was going on with Emmett and to enjoy the honeymoon because karma's a bitch. One night in particular, Candy receives a late night text message that is a message from Emmett to Candy. Rob picks up the phone, calls him. The next thing you know, Emmett is headed over to the Hall house. Now, Candy, she stays inside. She does not go outside. The two men are talking it out. We know it did not get physical, but there was a lot of huffing and puffing and scuffing and shuffling of the feet, mainly from Emmett's perspective. We also know that Robert, after that talk, whatever was said, he walks back into the house. He looks at Candy with defeat on his face and his spirit. And he says, congratulations, he's young and successful. While Candy admits to cheating on her husband, she denies sleeping with her boss, Emmett. Two miles away in a quiet cul-de-sac, mother of five, Ashley Corrigan, is struggling with her marriage. At this point, Ashley has really been struggling because she knows also her marriage is broken and their anniversary was coming up. Instead of spending the wedding anniversary together like she was hoping for, he actually takes off and attends a bodybuilding conference. But Ashley isn't the only one trying to figure out why their marriage appears to be falling apart. The morning of March 11th started off in a very interesting way. Candy went to go see a divorce attorney and she was escorted by Emmett. Candy will say that she was just inquiring about a divorce and 
just curious about the process and that it wasn't really anything serious and that Emmett had convinced her to go talk to this divorce attorney about the possibility of leaving Rob. She goes home and she sees Rob, her husband, in the garage packing up boxes, packing up his belonging. Prior to that, his daughter also saw him packing boxes and said, you know, Dad, what are you doing? And he mentioned that he was moving out. A few miles down the street, a parallel story is playing out in the Corrigan home. You have Ashley that decides this day, March 11th, would be the day that she fights for the marriage. I tried to kiss him and he moved his head away from me. And the kids tried to connect with him. He pretty quickly said, no, he's going to go out and run this errand. And so she knew that something was a little bit strange about that. He said he, he just needed to go pick up something from the drugstore. I pleaded with him not to leave. I looked in his eyes and I was like, please just stay. We've got to figure out what the heck is going on and we got to fix it. He looked at me and he said, you know what, don't tell me what to do. And he walked out the garage door and slammed it on the way out. Candy and Emmett meet up in the Walgreens parking lot. She jumps into his truck. They stop and get gas, and they're just kind of driving around until they come upon this underdeveloped subdivision where they pull over. They have sex. It's actually for the second time that day. And while this is going on, in a coincidence, I guess you would say, Rob and Candy's teenage daughter happens to drive by that Walgreens and she sees her mom's car there. I went and got gas at Fred Meyer with um, Emmett and then I, we were driving back and my daughter called me. Because her daughter is at Walgreens and sees her car but doesn't see her mom. So she's like, hey mom, where are you? And I said, um, I'm on my way back and that is my best friend Michelle because I didn't want to tell her that, who I was with. And so after that, their daughter calls Rob on the phone and tells him that Candy's car is parked at the Walgreens. And so Rob wonders what is going on. And pretty quickly, uh, it's established that he thinks that, that she is with Emmett. Rob Hall gets in his truck and drives to Walgreens to look for his wife. So then Rob calls and he um, calls me and I pick up and he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I am out. He said, are you out with Emmett? And I said, I am. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, we're just talking. And for some reason, Emmett grabs the phone from her and says, what's up, chief? And then Emmett got really upset with Rob on the phone and said something like, um, something in the sense of, I'll, break your head or something. And I looked at him and I, I kind of hit him on the shoulder and I go, what are you doing? And I grabbed the phone and I said, I'll be there in just a second. So tensions are high at this point and Emmett is pumped, he's mad. So they all gather at the Walgreens parking lot, 10 o'clock at night. 911, you need police, fire, or paramedics? There was three gunshots at the um, um, Walgreens. When I drove by, there were two people down. Please, 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 please